we learned about it being. So we have these three icons already on our writer's tool chart, doing, seeing, and thinking. We're going to add one more to those three. And that one more is going to be dialogue, speech. The colors do mean something. We use green for action because it's the color of a green light or grass. We use blue because it can be an eye color. We use yellow because it's the color of a light bulb going off, representing thinking. And we use red or pink highlighters because it's the color of lipstick. So we will begin with this piece written by a fourth grader, Elizabeth Stewart who tells about an experience that she remembers fishing with her grandfather. If we were to look at her kernel essay before she fleshed it out to be a whole essay, it might look like this. We chunked up this piece and summarized the parts, which would read, I was at Holly Lake. We set up to fish. We fished. I won the bet. I was victorious. So what did Elizabeth Stewart do to add details? First, we will go through this piece again, looking for all the speech, all the talking, things you would have heard anyone say. So there we have now color coded and made a legend for the talking. Our next color will be yellow. And with the students, we go through it and they find thinking. The way to tell if it's thinking or not is to ask yourself, if you had been standing there with Elizabeth and her grandfather, would you have known about that sentence? You wouldn't because it was in her head. It was in the narrator's head. Next, we color all the blue for seeing. Whether she tells us she was actually looking at something or maybe she described it so well that we could see it very clearly. Green for doing, we saved that for last. It's the action. And it's not just the writer's feet. What were her feet doing? It's any action that means movement. So there we have four colors for our writer's tool chart. We've added dialogue now, and you could put colors on it if you want to. But now that we have done it with a piece of reading, we can try it out on something that we wrote. So we'll start with a sentence from a kernel essay and ask our students to do a before and after. There's a before. I opened my gift from Matilda. And there are the four colors that I intended to add. You see, I added them in no particular order. It all means the same thing. The after means I open my gift, but it has all those different details. At this point, we update our writer's toolboxes and now we have four different ways to add details. It's not enough just to collect them. Now we use them throughout the rest of the school year, coloring up pieces of reading to notice what writers are doing. That's author's craft. Or if we're the author, coloring up our own writing and seeing what else we need to add. It makes it pretty visible. Students no longer walk up to the teacher's desk and say, is this good enough? What else did I need to add? If they color it up, they can see what's missing. Here's an expository piece written by a fourth grader. It scored the highest possible score on the STAR test in 2018. You can see part of the craft of this student by looking at the colors. Same with this one another fourth grade composition. People often think that, yes, talking, thinking, seeing, and doing are great for narrative writing, but these are expository pieces. Using lively details included in these four colors brings a piece of writing to life for a reader, even if it's 
an expository piece. This one is a seventh grade piece. Another seventh grade piece. A ninth grader wrote this one. You could make stations around your room for students to go alone or with a partner to remember. Now, what could I add for snapshots? One teacher sent us some pictures when she and her students used black lights as they were doing Color It Up. Don't those look like fun? And we continue throughout the year adding not only craft but additional structures to our banks of those two and we continue to use them as we write.